Hello everyone, this is Jeff of Talf Blader Mouse. Today we're going to be shooting 3D printed 70 caliber slugs. A viewer named Michael contacted me and said he had made a whole bunch of 70 caliber 3D printed pellets. We have not had very good success using 3D printed slugs out of our shotgun. Michael was certain that the pellet design, despite being very, very lightweight, would still prove to be very accurate. Is it possible that this young man is the first to do what no one has done before? Michael created a large cavity and he put steel BBs in this one. We also took a tap and put quarter 20 threads in the rest of the slugs. This allowed us to put hex bolts and also Allen cap screws in the cavity to make them a little heavier. This, it's got BBs stuck in the cavity. I don't know if that's going to be heavy enough. We'll try that one first at our plate. Number one. Hit it. Huh. You hit it. That's, that's, yeah. accuracy is important. Okay, now, what if we add a little more weight to it? Quarter 20 bolt. I think it's stainless steel even. We need a brake action. Amazing. Aha! You read the bolt there. Yeah, that's where the hex bolt hit. We gotta, let's find a different target to shoot at, like a, something more breakable yeah okay we got another hex hex bolt model this time we're gonna shoot at a, a tile roof tiling like from a pagoda or something okay go ahead Ooh. went right through it yeah Ooh. that's no thin tile it's it's concrete, basically. Yeah. I thought it would shatter it, but it... It, it went through it. Pretty impressive. Yeah. Okay, we got a can of some kind of... Uh, what do you think that is? Korean? Yes. What do you think it says? Is that another hex one? Yes. Okay. Whenever you're ready, Darren. Holy smoke. Okay, let's shoot the lead plate. These things are, are incredibly accurate. They've been shooting a little high, just a little high. I think it's because of speed though. Yeah. Lead plate versus hex bolt, 3D printed, whenever you're ready. Right. Okay, this one's got an Allen cap screw. So it's kind of like a hollow point. It's a, it's a much higher, harder grade bolt than the uh, hex bolts that we use. And we'll shoot this at the lead plate too. Amazing, amazing. Yep. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. That's that good. You can see the lead, and it's amazing. I thought they would just disintegrate into powder or something, you know? Yeah. And hopefully with these markings, we'll be able to see what, if they're rotating, because we are shooting through them a rifle choke tube. Okay, uh, another Allen bolt at our exploding, maybe exploding pumpkin. Hit it. <laughs> okay, uh, last one is a hex versus our block of clay. Everyone loves the block of clay. Whenever you're ready. 
Chunks are hitting. Man, strong. like the Terminator. Yeah. So it went all the way through. Here's once you can see the dent that it left when it hit the plate that was behind the the clay block. Let's walk around the clay block. Love the clay block. Who doesn't love clay? It's just, it's just dirty to work with. I think it entered right here. Yeah. Somewhere in this area. Yeah, yeah. Those things, I can't believe how accurate they are. Perfect. Yeah, the kid's a genius. That's, I mean, it blew sides off this thing. Yeah. Chunks of it gone. Over the years, we have attempted to demonstrate the viability of a 3D printed bullet. The biggest problem is the weight. They're very lightweight so the rounds were made very large in scale to make up for that. But a large slug like that tends to tumble around and performs very poorly. And then the other problem was just the strength of the 3D printed bullets. They'd often break up through the air and maybe a piece would hit the target. And along comes Michael and comes up with a simple design that saves the day. Now let's review the high speed footage and see how well these things fly. Weighing so little, I thought this one would really flutter around and fly all wonky, but it flew nice and straight. It was a big surprise. This next shot used a hex bolt, and you can see it's flying kind of funny. It's not because of the pellet itself, it's because I put a uh, what's called a nitro card behind the pellet. It's a piece of cardboard, and it stuck to it, and when it finally released, it threw the pellet off balance. This next one also used a hex bolt for ballast and it flew absolutely perfect. Perfect balance, perfect rotation. And you have to realize these things are rotating at probably eight or 9,000 RPM. After only a few shots, we realized that these things were accurate. So we started pulling out all kinds of interesting things to shoot at because we knew we we're gonna hit them each time. Since we had eight of these pellets to shoot, it gave us a really good opportunity to try all kinds of uh, imaginative targets to shoot at. And for whatever reason, a lot of the shots were going a little bit high, and that's probably just because of how we were aiming the gun, because we saw no deviation in the flight path of the slugs. I was anticipating these flying a lot faster just because they were so light. I thought we'd see velocities in excess of 2,000 feet per second, but I believe these are only flying just above the speed of sound, probably 1,200 feet per second at, at most. I wasn't sure if the hex bolt or the Allen bolts would work better. Uh, it looked like the Allen bolts flew a lot more stable, but there were, were a few shots where the hex bolts were very, very stable. So I really don't think there was any advantage from one to the other. I used a permanent marker to put those black markings on the on the pellets and those stood out really well. I wasn't sure how well they'd show up on camera, but it really gives you an idea how quickly these things are rotating. And you can just count the frames and do a quick calculation to see that and these are turned about 9000 RPM. And here you can see a freeze frame of the shock wave coming from that big blast target bottle. Unfortunately, all the energy just went up and didn't blow the pumpkin up. I gotta say it was exciting that these worked. We were just, it just totally made our day. Now it's one thing to just hurl anything out of a shotgun. And it's a completely different thing to hit what you're aiming at. We shot eight rounds, we got eight hits. And that says a lot. A lot can happen between the gun and the target. And that's called external ballistics and how the projectile behaves between those two points is very important. I do hope you'll take the time to check out Michael's video on how he made these and his channel. I think you'll enjoy it. It appears to be some kind of green substance. Oh, oh no! <laughs> hey, hey. I don't know, I think it's some kind of seaweed.
It only weighs five and three quarter pounds, including sling, and a fully loaded 15 round clip. Will you stop it? <laughs> 